Hi, everyone, and welcome to day two of Beacon Congress. Uh, day one seemed to go off pretty smoothly. We had some uh, fantastic talks and some excellent conversations. Uh, day two looks like it's going to shape up uh, similarly well. Uh, one thing to uh, point out for day two, uh, we're going to start a bit earlier. Uh, so it's going to begin at 10 a.m. Eastern time uh, with a sandbox session that a lot of the uh, European collaborators are involved with. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure to have it at a more reasonable time for them. Uh, it's a, a great sort of situation where we're having uh, a broader uh, set of Beacon participants, uh, but it does mean that we need to adjust some times for that. Uh, similarly, tomorrow, our keynote will be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So uh, please make sure to uh, show up for that. Uh, Dr. Sinapayan lives in Japan, and as such, uh, any later than that would be uh, the middle of the night for her. And so we wanted to try and uh, find a time as reasonable as possible. Um, but uh, yeah, so please, uh, today and tomorrow, uh, things, you know, make sure to show up at uh, 10 a.m. Um, so today is day two of Beacon Congress, and uh, for the second day of Congress, uh, uh, for this opening talk, we normally talk about all the stats about the past year, um, giving all the different numbers for papers and, what, and whatever, but it, it's, it's pretty dry, um, if impressive. And uh, furthermore, uh, this year, we're, we're not collecting quite as much information uh, since we don't have site visits or anything like that from the NSF. Uh, and um, uh, we also are, are trying to build out Beacon to be bigger. And so it, uh, the, the stats aren't as necessarily meaningful. Um, even more importantly, though, there's obviously a pandemic going on for the last year and a half, and that's, and that's been a big deal. Um, where many of us have had a lot more responsibilities, um, having to take more care of people, and also dealing with a lot more uh, existential anxieties uh, with everything going on in the world. And uh, I, I think this is, you know, this is a year where we should not be focused as much on productivity. And I actually think there's a lot of lessons that can be learned for the future of academia, but I could give a whole separate talk on, on all of that. Um, one of the other things that the pandemic has done is forced us to shift everything to be virtual. And across science, um, this has had pros and cons, right? Um, we haven't been interacting in person as much, and that really loses some very important uh, um, uh, uh, reinforcing conversations and all these sorts of things that are that are normally wonderful, particularly the spontaneity of them. But on the on the positive side, um, moving more things virtual have has allowed many more people to be involved. So the the um, beacon um, seminars, for example, are one of many of the you know different seminars that are now you know, fully easily accessible online where everyone is online. There's not the bias of, of people there being in person that are asking most of the questions or anything. Um, lab meetings are going online, all sorts of meetings are, are, are online. And I think this has been really wonderful, but also the fact that people in general are more comfortable with working over Zoom and, and those sorts of situations means that we've been able to run workshops online and really reach out to different people. Like one of the workshops we have going this summer, the Waves Workshop, uh, uh, we're giving real world programming experience to computer science students, where we, we give them these, these, this mentored uh, experience where they're working on the Avita Ed software that, that ends up getting used in, in many hundreds of, of schools around the world. And so it's a, it's a serious piece of software for them to work on. And so that's, you know, uh, that's been going extremely well. Uh, tomorrow is actually the last day of that workshop. Um, we've had you know, many other similar sorts of, uh, of events. And so going into the future, um, I hope we can strike a really good balance between in-person and virtual in order to um, take advantage of the lessons that I've learned. I know from myself personally, I've learned to do all sorts of videos that I never took the time to learn to do before, which has been wonderful for classes. In any case, tomorrow, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the plans for Beacon over the next year. Uh, but for now, I encourage you all to go off and enjoy day two of Beacon Congress. We have some uh, great talks ahead and some great uh, um, sandboxes, workshops and everything. Uh, so 
Uh, all of you should have a have a great day at Congress.